Sean? Yeah, I've been knowing Howard Stern since he was in D.C. So you know since what I was in my single digits. Dave Chappelle is here. He's a real funny comic. There's Dave Chappelle. Funny guy. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, you did play Robin in that sketch. I just remember that sketch. At one time in his life, he had to play the part of a woman. Yeah. Only for my buddy, though. Hey, Dave, you were the guy in uh, Nutty Professor, the first one. With, with the big teeth and the and the hair. Yeah, I didn't even recognize you. I guess they dialed you up so much, I didn't even know that was you. You're the one who, like, goofs on Eddie Murphy in the audience. Right. But I had to, man. I had to, like, disguise myself, because I do stand up. Right. You don't want, you know. You don't want to be tagged as that guy. Right. Yeah, and then everybody starts doing it to you. Right, and then everyone wants to be Buddy Love. Right. I mean, I walk down the street, you mean, mother's a bitch. Like, man, you know, this is a movie. Yeah, you don't want, yeah, they start fighting with you right. and saying yeah, stuff yeah, about yeah, your mother, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh. He also was in that, uh. Mel Brooks film that was, you know, the send-up of Robin Hood. Yeah, Robin Hood, yeah. That yeah. was like one of my first <laughs> ones. Yeah. I need the money, Howard. <laughs> hey, I've seen your mind working. I would have done it, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. I understand. And what was that? What was it? On MTV you played Robin? Someone? On MTV. Remember that? The, the Elon guy, Gold. Elon Gold. Right. That was funny. You yeah. were Robin. And they put big balloons in your chest so you'd have oh. Yeah, so you're a hard person to, like, you're a hard person to parody, though, like. Right. Especially for a dude. Right. <laughs> you know. Right, here's a good I thought you did a good job. All right, it's cut, cut balloons. Here's a joke I heard on the internet. Uh, I'm just reading this because I want to get rid of the piece of paper. I thought it was kind of witty. Years ago, a hundred white men chasing one black man across a field was called the Ku Klux Klan. Today, it's called the PGA Tour. <laughs> oh, see, see, that's a little Very play good. on that. Very now good. that's a remix of a Dick Gregory joke. That's right. You see, it all it all comes back again. See, you go back to comedy history. You know your history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I listen to this stuff. By the way, Dave is 27 years old. Uh, a hot comedian on HBO. He's really 27? The reason I say, yeah. That's the real deal. <laughs> the reason I say he's 27 is because he grew up in Washington, D.C., and when we, were, when we were on the radio in Washington, D.C., he remembers, remember the TV commercials we ran when we first got there uh, where my parents had bags over their heads? Oh, yeah. yeah. How Stern's parents. Yeah. yeah. And, the bags and on the, I remember Dave was just a little kid when he saw those. Is that right? Uh, he remember remembers all them. that stuff. Yeah. We look uh, younger than you. That's the uh, funny thing. It's that showbiz, man. That showbiz. You're living the rough life. What do you do? You party a lot and everything? You, are you one of those guys that uh, is man. taking advantage of your newfound fame? Nah, I can't. See, I, you know, my girlfriend is pregnant. So. Yeah, you know, what is with that? I mean, what, what, what is that? Why does anybody have well, a wife anymore? You used to be my wife sex. is pregnant. Where did you get this girlfriend? Huh, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn? <laughs> is that right? Yeah, I met her, I met her in uh, New York. You can't, you can't, uh, she's not a white chick, is she? No. That would look bad. Eddie Murphy no, and all them would. Oh, uh, no. She's Filipino, which is like neutral. Oh, Filipino. Yeah, that's uh, neutral. Oh, that's almost a white woman. No, that's neutral. They the, they the black Asians. That's when you want a white woman, but you say, ah, I'll go over here. Right. <laughs> no. Exactly. Walk Filipino line. from Brooklyn, man. That's like. Does that's she so speak wrong. English? Yeah, she don't speak Tagalog. She speaks only Th English. That's not one of those girls you sent over. From you didn't uh, buy her. the Philippines, <laughs> you pay her father. Buy her from a no, 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 I didn't order her out to me. That's Saganese horse. Let me ask you a couple questions, though. But you, when you work with Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. did he want to show you his feet or see oh, your feet? Oh, Remember oh his? man. You see? think that's all ball? Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. mean, Eddie's cool, man. He was cool with me. He was. He just low key on the set. Right. But you got to understand, man, I don't hang out with Hollywood people. I just work. Oh, I don't believe that. No, I'm serious. I just work there. You do not have any famous friends. Eddie Murphy did not uh, you power been over I, to I wouldn't say. No, nah, I've never You're been to any of a famous, rat pack. famous dudes. I don't go to their houses. I don't, Tupac, I don't uh, did you know him at all? I'd see him uh, out. I'd see him around. Didn't you, didn't you involved in some kind of gunfight? Like, in other words, you were, at work, you were working in a club, and then Tupac got involved in a gunfight? At the comedy store. Right. At the comedy store. Eddie Griffin was on stage. I don't know what happened. Because I was upstairs. You know how the comedy store got three rooms. I'm upstairs, mm -hmm. and then people just start running up. So we were like, hmm, what's going on down there? And we went down there, and it was like a all-out Old Western bar fire. I seen Tupac throwing chairs. <laughs> the trench was whipping somebody, and then there was a stampede. It was like you were either fighting or running. And then the cops pulled up, and they shot up the police car. Not the rappers, but just the, the crowd. Right. It was at a comedy club. Mm. It was like the OK Corral. Yeah, it's the new deal, man. <laughs> and you're just trying to make a living. Yeah. Right. So it becomes dangerous. Tupac, wherever he went, there was trouble. Yeah, but you see, that's the thing. You never know in L.A. who started what. L.A. is crazy like that. Yeah, right. So you try to just stay out of that. You don't get involved in gang warfare. You didn't, you didn't grow up with gangs and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't that. want Mike talking about me. I keep it low-key. Right. 
I understand that. But you, you must be disappointed in the new Nutty Professor. You weren't in that one, The Clumps. They didn't put you uh, in that movie. Eddie played everything in that. Right. He didn't, yeah, didn't need right. anybody else. Yeah, I couldn't get in there. <laughs> right. It was like Eddie Murphy and Janet Jackson. And right. Now, you, you, you started a comedy at a young age. At 15, you took a bus up to the Apollo Theater to, to perform, right? That was your first experience in show business. Yes. And you got booed off the stage. I was booed. They booed me like I was white. Like you were a white man. <laughs> <laughs> you were booed like a white man. I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, that's come true, on, guys. A lot of white guys go up there yeah, and do get booed Yeah, they off. get ready to boo the white guys. That's right. You have to work extra hard if you're white at the Apollo <laughs> Theater. So yeah, you yeah. thought it was a lock. You're a black man. You're going to tell a few jokes. But how would you start off at the Apollo? It, it went bad from the get. <laughs> right. So then what did you do? You, you didn't give up. You didn't say, hey, I'm horrible. You went and you started working these small comedy clubs? Yeah, yeah. Well, see, getting getting booed off stage was good for you. Right. It, a it lot of comedians, sense. Yeah, a lot of comedians get scared to bomb. They don't take no chances after that. Right. But if you bomb that bad, you're like, man, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, you can just do whatever. I can live through that. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, there's everybody screaming up there. Hey, kids booing you, everybody. Now, what are you going to do when this baby is born? Are you going to are marry you this, uh, this uh, Filipino girl? gal? See, then this is a good question. Mm -hmm. Does yeah, she want to get married? Actually, yeah, we got plans on getting married. You're in love? Yeah, man. And yeah. you don't look at other women? Yeah, I mean, I'm a man. I'm going to look at other women But sometime. you're willing to, for the rest of your life, not have sex? No, he's probably like you. See, I can't think about what, it. What, he's going to get divorced? Mm -hmm. It's the private part. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think you would have made it being single? Now, think about this for real. Do you think you would have made it? Being a single man. Well, gee, I, I would like to think that I had some talent and that uh, perhaps I would have made it. But talent, but you like to but think talent that. and focus are two different things. I hear what right. you're saying. I, I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have been as focused. You're right. right. In fact, Chris Rock credits his marriage with his superstardom. That's not what you he know. told me. No, no, no. no. Oh. Right here on this stage, he said. I don't said, care what he said in public. He said. <laughs> The reason he wasn't very funny on Saturday Night Live right. was because he was busy. Yeah, well, he's had time to rethink that whole stance. <laughs> yeah, going out, right. going out kills it, man. Going right, out, it does. Well, I, I got to tell you though, even though I'm single now, I every night during the week, I I, I live like a monk. I, that's not true. I'm focused. I, I don't that go that's out. That's not true. I do not go out there. Well, you're single with you married man you want. habits. You're single with married man yes, habits. Yes, I am. That and you true. know, Mike, you know what's out there. Right, right. I know. You know I know what's booty, going on. The booty's a booby trap now. It is. It's the Booty it's not trap. safe out there. It could throw <laughs> off your focus. <laughs> and also, you know, you could get a lot of different things. So you're saying that you would you would just stay focused and get married to this Filipino girl. Yes. And and that's going to be your life. That's going to be my ticket. I, you know, you got to think of these women like like frequent flyer miles. Right. You know what I mean? Now, if you're doing nice things for this girl, nice things for that girl, it never adds up. You got to get all your miles on one on airline. One airline. <laughs> 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 that's one way that's, to think yeah, of it. I never looked at it that way. <laughs> yeah, the other girl, there's nothing to it, man. <laughs> now, you, you, know, you had a chance at uh, Superstardom. Fox gave you a television deal. You developed a sitcom for them. And you walked away from the whole thing because they wanted to change one of the characters to a white person. Yeah, not one. It was a woman I was living with in the show. Oh, they would give you a white woman. Yeah, and now who wants to see me? Even the uh, Jewish lady in Mississippi don't want to see me live with no white woman. That's a sure turn on television. Yeah, you knew that was a why did a they, bad idea? In other words, they were going to make it an interracial show, make it all about interracial marriage or something. Nah, because it wasn't like I was married to the girl on mm -hmm. the show. You were roommates. Were you? Yeah, it, it was a thing like you know, a guy comes to the city and he got to live with. Was the, she uh, hot, the woman? She was cool. Yeah. Who was the Tracy, white woman? The, oh, the, the white woman never, she never got a chance. I, I Who was the black she woman? She was never cast. It was, a, it was Tracy Villar. Hmm. Was know. she a Playboy Playmate? Yeah. Nah, she's an actor. Was she fine? Yeah, she's cute. Nice, nice ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice all right. So, and then when they, they wanted to replace her with a white woman, you stood up to them and said, no way. Yeah, I couldn't do it. That was it. Yeah, I mean, you know, because what's going to happen is just by bringing it up, you know, if I do it, I don't get the show I want. If but, I don't do it, but wouldn't you have been embarrassed if uh, your friend saw you on a TV show with a white woman? It would not I be could never go to a barber shop again. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, you, you can't live with a white woman. Right, and you're working hard. I mean, you really you you hardly vacation, right? You don't even vacation. Uh, well, I went on one vacation this year. It took me a while to figure out where I wanted to go. I wanted to, I wanted to go someplace different. I was gonna go to Cuba. At first. Cuba. Cuba? Well, I met this girl, man. I asked her, what is it like in Cuba? And she's like, oh, the people in my country are so poor. I know women who have sex with men just for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so it seemed like a good place yeah, to go. I, mean, I, go, I book tickets for the day after Halloween. Oh, like, I don't go to <laughs> Cuba with a bag By the way, candy. the uh, Philippines is a lot like that, too. Oh, that's what they say. Yeah, that's why you got that But woman. she's from Brooklyn. And you guys live in Brooklyn now? 
No, nah, I'm, I'm living in Ohio. You live in Ohio? Well, that's a commute. On, I got a farm. I got a 65-acre farm. You Ohio. are kidding me. I'm staying away from Mike, man. What is that about? What is it about? I got 30 acres of crap land. I open my window, and there's white dudes raking everywhere. <laughs> I can't. I can't get enough. <laughs> you like that? What? Yeah, it's quiet out there, man. You know. Mm. I mean, I'm you... always in New York, L.A., and then I'm always traveling on the road. I get like three, four days a week. And you live out on this farm? Yeah, I just chill out, man. Watch cable, listen oh, to radio. The... <laughs> Someone told me you study a lot, like you're a scholar or something. You nah, study well, history. I, I, yeah, from television. Right. I saw that. I saw a thing about Hitler and something. Oh, you watch the History Channel. Oh, the History Channel. Oh, you don't <laughs> yeah, study yeah, history. Yeah, that's, that's nothing. You're just watching the History Channel. I get the Cliff Notes, man. The all every Hitler channel, channel, every channel, everything. No, the all Hitler, <laughs> all Hitler well, Everything in the history. The only thing in history is it's Hitler. Hitler. That's the only, the only interesting thing. Film that was yeah. That was a bad dude to walk the earth. <laughs> what did you think of him? Hitler. Hmm. Well. <laughs> yeah. He killed. Uh, he killed six million Jewish people. Obviously, I think it's safe to say he did not like Jews. Right. <laughs> you could say that. I think it's a fair assumption. Right. That he didn't like blacks, although we didn't really make his speeches. That's right. Yeah, but right. he never put black people in concentration camps. No, he didn't. So maybe he's all right for you. No, nah, I doubt that. <laughs> do, you, do you think he could? I I, I don't think he would have liked black people. No, the black people would have went straight to the ovens. They yeah, yeah. You know, all you gotta do is, is put a DJ in the camp and hand out <laughs> flyers. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't. Something's going on the camp. <laughs> you don't need you don't need concentration to know the black right. people would have been marched right in. Yeah, you wouldn't even have to concentrate. But, uh, yeah, no, so I think Hitler would have been... The only thing good you could say about Hitler is he really could get people to march. I mean, That's some of right. those marches were unbelievable. <laughs> and they, he, ma you know, they, he made a nice uniform. Hmm. Yeah, he was crazy, man. He had syphilis. It, did he really? That's what they say. They say <laughs> that syphilis was eating Hitler's brains up. Oh, is that an excuse? Oh, he was okay until the syphilis got to him. He was a yeah. painter. He was a painter until he got syphilis. <laughs> that guy was uh, It was the syphilis. In a way, you're smart to live out in Ohio because, you know, in the black community, there's a lot of trouble with the police and things like this. And out in Ohio, you probably never have to call 911. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call them. Any, and black people don't call police, man. That's, they don't? That's a, I would say that's a white thing. You can get shot and you'll call a friend before you call the 911. Really? Yeah, man. Well, see, it's different. And I, like, white people call the police for anything. Hello, police. My neighbor's music is too loud. All this stuff. Right, right. I never call the police. Never. They tape the phone calls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want something bad to happen to me. They play my nine one one tape on the news. I say anything. <laughs> all right. If I'm if I'm scared. Right. I don't want to have to explain myself to my buddies. Yeah, you sound like a real pussy. But yeah. Right. Yeah, you, you, you gonna call cry and cry. <laughs> Look at what's a what's a uh, figure skater's husband. And she beat up her husband, and he oh, called. Oh, Tanya her, Harding? Help, she's beating me. You know how much trouble man got to be <laughs> in to make a telephone call like that? Right. Well, anyway, so so here you are. You're living in Ohio. You got the HBO special. Looks like your career is focused. Yeah, Maybe man. it's smart you're getting married. You took the Filipino girl to Ohio. Mm -hmm. She likes it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, those Filipinos love Ohio. Love a farm. They love, yeah. Yeah, that's why they come to this country, so they can live in Ohio. Oh. <laughs> and you're going to have the kids soon, and then uh, you're going you're gonna to be Do you know if it's a girl or a boy? Oh, yeah, I do. I'm not supposed to say. Is that right? I'm, I'm not supposed to talk are about you, it. Are you going to be one of those parents that lets your kids watch anything on TV, go on the Internet and all that? Or? Hell no. I mean, listen, man. I watch. I used to watch a lot of TV growing up, but it's, it's detrimental. You ever watch like a cartoon you used to watch well, as an adult? Yes. Like the Pepe Le Pew? Yeah. He's a funny guy, right? Right. I always yeah. liked Pepe Le Pew. And then you watch him as an adult, and you're like, good God, what kind of rapist is this guy? <laughs> He's a rapist. Take it easy, Pepe. Put the booty down. You don't like it. He actually sexually harassed all the other skunks. Every skunk. Every skunk. So uh, you're going to let the kids watch whatever they want? No. No. No, no, no. you are not. I want, well, yeah, I ain't going to keep, i watch TV in the other room. Mm -hmm. right now. And this is a dream now for you because you grew up in Washington, D.C. That's a poor neighborhood, right? Yeah, I, but see, I didn't grow up in, like, the hood, in right, quote. Right, right. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm, I went to the ghetto a few times. One time I went with a white friend of mine. You wanted to see the ghetto? Yeah, yeah, we was, you know, we was buying some weed, but. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, field trip. Yeah, field trip. Yeah. He was scared of this. Oh, oh my God, Dave, is area cool? I mean, I'm scared, too. It's a ghetto. <laughs> hey, what do you want from me? I, I see know. the same thing you see. It's because it's, uh, it's I'm black doesn't mean I'm comfortable here. It's, it's dangerous. <laughs> Not every black man is comfortable in a ghetto. No. Nah, I, th I don't I, think any black Yeah, I don't think the people that live in a ghetto are, are comfortable <laughs> there. You got any sense. That's some, cir right. that's some circumstances. So white people just would assume you could be the tour guide through the ghetto and they'd be safe. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see on Clarence Thomas in the hood. Like, <laughs> right. I'm completely accepted here. Right, exactly. 
Well, Dave, uh, I look forward to your HBO comedy special. I think you're funny as hell. Man, thanks good for having, having you. Good to guys. Good to see you again, Jack. You know? And good luck with that foreign chick. I hope uh, things work out. Oh, <laughs> she's from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, that's about as foreign as it gets. <laughs> so how did everything go in there, Dave? It was cool, man. It, it wasn't wasn't that painful? Nah, I've done radio before, but never like this, man. I, I didn't know what to expect, but it was real cool. All right, Dave, thanks for coming down. You guys, thanks for having me. Good luck with your HBO special. Hey, thanks. Everybody watch my special if you get a chance. All right. Me and my family. What's the name of your special? It's, it's called, called Killing Them Softly, which speaks of the cadence of it. You know, if a comic does good, he says, I kill him. So I'm just, I'm killing them softly. <laughs> How old were you when you made your first TV development deal? Nineteen. My mother and my grandmother were freaked out. You know, I was the first person in my family not to go to college that had not been a slave. Right. <laughs> so I was really breaking from tradition. And uh, it was like a graduation lunch we were having. And they had my dad come and talk to me. And my dad takes me outside and he's like, listen, and this is some advice that applies to all you acting students. He says, to be an actor is a lonely life. Everybody wants to make it and you might not make it. And I said to my dad, well, well that depends on what making it is, Dad. He was a smart, smart ass kid. Yeah. It depends on what making it is, Dad. He says, what do you mean? I said, well, you're a teacher. I said, if I can make a teacher's salary doing comedy, I think that's better than being a teacher. And he started laughing. He said, if you keep that attitude, I think you should go. He said, but name your price in the beginning. If it ever gets more expensive than the price you name, get out of there. Mm -hmm. Thus, Africa. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, oh, you guys are going to learn a lot tonight. <laughs> what can they learn? You know, like, you guys are students now, so you're idealists, but you don't know about where art and corporate interests meet yet. Just prepare to have your heart broken. <laughs> like, in a way, <laughs> you see them laughing at evil laugh? <laughs> 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 because he knows, man, and everybody laughs at me, but just get your Africa tickets ready, baby, because it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. You, you have no idea. When Martin Lawrence was in that chair, we talked about Blue Streak. I love that dude. He played a role in your life, I believe. How do you feel about him as a person, as an artist? Martin Lawrence is the guy that showed everybody you can make it from D.C. to Hollywood. And uh, I had a personal stake in his success. Every time he did something, it made me feel inspired and really good. And he was always real nice to me. He'd sit me down, what's going on with you, baby boy? What, what? We'd talk about comedy, whatever. And, uh, you know, when we did Blue Streak, we were promoting it, and Martin had a stroke. He almost died. And then after that, I saw him, and I was like, oh, my God, Martin. Are you okay? And he said, I got the best sleep I ever got in my life. That's how tough he is. So let me ask you this. What is happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough will be on the street waving a gun, screaming, they are trying to kill me? Yeah. What's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going to Africa? Why does Mariah Carey make a $100 million deal and take clothes off on TRL? It, a weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. 
Ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. I'm dropping dimes tonight. <laughs> I've had a long year, Mr. Lippin. <laughs> We're on our way. What did you mean, Dave, when you described your father's death in 1998 as the beginning of a terrible decline? I was 23 when I was doing half bake. I was getting ready to turn 24. And I was going through all the things that a dude goes through when it goes from one level to the next. I was yeah. starring in my, a movie that I wrote. So things start getting crazy around you. Yeah. And my 24th birthday was coming on August the 24th, and I said, this is going to be a big one. And the morning that I turned 24, phone rang. And my sister was like, Dad had a stroke. For the next year, I watched my father teeter on life and death. And it was just all this stuff, man. Like I was, uh, Dad was dying. The half-baked didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out. I was real upset about that. Because it was a real cool script. And then I saw it. I was like, hey, man, you made a weed movie for kids. And one four kids a script, you know. It was all these things, so much pressure. Africa. Then I, um, <laughs> I was in Ohio. I get a call on my cell phone from Hollywood. I'm like, hello, Hollywood. They're like, hello, Dave. <laughs> They're like, that pilot you did for Fox, the, looks like they want to pick it up. We need you to come out because they want to meet with you. And I was like, well, listen, I can't really come out right now. Got a real bad situation at home. Can we talk about this on the phone? No, no, they would rather meet with you in person. Huh. But you know, like the whore that they turn us into. I jumped on that plane and left my father's bedside, which I regret to this day. And I went out and I sat with these people in this room. And if you can imagine a large circle of people, and I was 12 o'clock, the black dude. Yeah, Dave, we really liked the show, but the, the pilot episode was about me getting booed off stage at the Apollo. They go, you know, but what are we going to do about it? I mean, there's not really any white people in it. So well, it's about the Apollo. It's not really white. Well, you know, we were thinking about the girl on the show. We didn't think she was that funny, not that good looking. I think we should recast her, maybe. And they start using terms like universal appeal. Mm. Basically saying they want me to recast the girl with a white woman. I say, yeah, I don't think I can do this, and, and, and I quit. On the cover of Variety, Chappelle pulls the race card. The race card. And I get calls from Newsweek, 60 Minutes. Everybody, we want your story. <laughs> now I'm scared to death. I'm like Rosa Parks or something. I'm like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I was just venting a little bit. And then, a few months later, dad dies. And that's hard for a young dude in his life. That's a, that's a real tough loss. I was there when he died. And he went from being my father to what are we going to do with the body. Within moments, it was over. And I'm going through all this stuff, and this is the guy I would usually talk to, right? Dad. And I got to figure this out for myself. I don't want to figure this out for myself. You know, I was beat down. I wasn't living right. You know what I mean? Like the weed thing was just bad habit at this point. And, and 
You know what I mean? All these, you know, chicken head girls you mess with when it comes with the territory. I'm just being real. Just being real. <laughs> it wasn't living right, man. I didn't feel good. And, and the stand-up stuff was just some angry stuff. It was just like I was kind of bottoming out. But when my dad died, because I'd been commuting back and forth to Ohio so much, that's when I bought the farm, which I called on the f*** you Hollywood farm. Did you stay in Yellow Springs for a while? I'm, I live there to this day. I, go, I, I live there to this day. I'm raising my kids there. Look, man, at, at that point in your life, it, it's something so real in contrast to what Hollywood is, a very powerful illusion. And when your dad dies, it kind of just broke the spell, like, oh, this is bullshit. Look, I've been spending so much time doing this. What about my family? What about my friends? Wait, whatever happened to my friends? Damn, I don't even have any friends. Ugh. So I bounced, man. And, uh, New Year's Eve, 1999, I, I moved into that farm, and that was it. As far as I was concerned, I was done with show business. with Martin and you, that when you play white dudes, <laughs> I can talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> now don't make fun of me. That when you play white dudes, your speech is pitch perfect, which led me to realize that either one of you could, if you wished, speak that way all the time. In other words, is it a matter of choice? Every black American is bilingual. <laughs> all of us. We speak street vernacular and we speak job interview. <laughs> There's a certain way I gotta speak to have access. If I'm sitting across the table from a studio exec, you know, sometimes they'll do it to me. Say, my man, what's happening? I'm so hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, and I gotta, I gotta throw out them big words. I gotta let them know that my parents are probably smarter than your parents. Yeah. And much better educated. They're, they're much better educated than your parents, but they may not have had the access that your parents had. But this is show business. I can climb that socioeconomic ladder just off the merit my skills, I can talk that shit. It's God given gift. So, you know, yeah, I speak in street vernacular because when I'm talking to an audience of people, I feel comfortable. It's like an extension. Really, crowds are like my friends. I, they're the most, it's the most consistent part of my life since I was 14. But yeah. in certain situations, you know, I, I gotta. I understand. 
I got to use that job interview. Well, <laughs> I don't when, like that deal. <laughs> can you see a time in your life ever when you won't be doing stand-up? This past year, I did the least stand-up I've done since I started. I was freaked out, man, with the fame thing and, and being called uh, crazy and drug addict and all these things. Uh, scared me. You know, being treated that way. Like, I'm not a person anymore. You say this shit about me in front of my children. and you know, who Really, like, who the f*** do these people think they are? And they don't know what happened. You know, I, I, have, I have not spoken about what, what would make a person walk off the set of a successful show and go to Africa. But again, people don't understand it, so they call me crazy, and I don't like that. What should they understand, Dave? What should they understand? Well, I did two seasons, and it was very easy. Not very easy, but I didn't go to Africa. And then suddenly when I'm getting paid what they said was $50 million, I, it's, I can't do it anymore. Now let's think about this. You've heard them on their radios, on television. You've read their newspapers. You've even talked to them in your beer houses. Why do they call us? They call us Anglo fools. They call you Anglo fools. And they've called all of us be our friends. Are we be our friends? No, no. They call us enemies in their house. That's not the truth. The truth is they stole our rights. You know that. They destroyed our wealth. Call us Cameroonians. We are Amazonians. Ambazonia is not a dream, it's a reality. And let's talk to Ambazonia. Ambazonia, you were lost. And abused, abused. Now you are found. We have found you. We pledge our lives to set you free forever. Free. We won't let you down. And this is our promise to you. Nobody can ever take this promise away. And we will not budge one step back. No, 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 no. This really comes down to you and me. You have to join our pledge and, and play your part. It's my part and your part to make it. You and me will set it free because freedom is the word. Don't let them lie. There's nothing else but freedom. Freedom is our right, and in that right is our liberty.